Hey everyone, in this lesson we're talking about pseudogout. So pseudogout is a calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate disease. It is due to a deposition of calcium pyrophosphate crystals into various joints in the body leading to inflammation of those joints. Here's a picture of some of these calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystals. And you can imagine if these become lodged in various joints in the body can lead to inflammation and pain. This is what pseudogout is. Now, there are specific risk factors for pseudogout. Really, the main risk factor is increased age. It typically only affects older individuals, 60 years or older. Pseudogout is associated with certain conditions. Some of those include hyperparathyroidism, hypothyroidism, hypomagnesemia, and hypophosphatasia. Now, pseudogout differs from gout in that gout is urate crystals, pseudogout is calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystals. So the pathophysiology of pseudogout is what we mentioned before. There is a deposition of calcium pyrophosphate crystals in the joint. So if you look here, these calcium pyrophosphate crystals can enter uh, in the joint, within the joint space, leading to inflammation and pain. So this leads to acute inflammation of a joint. And what happens is that there are neutrophils that actually phagocytize these crystals. So the um, antibody IgG tags these calcium pyrophosphate crystals. Neutrophils then phagocytize these IgG tagged calcium pyrophosphate crystals. This then leads to a release of inflammatory cytokines. This is how it causes an acute inflammation of the joint and pain for the individual. Generally, pseudogout is polyarticular. It is a slower onset than gout. And it usually lasts for about three weeks and it's self-limiting. So the body can actually take care of these calcium pyrophosphate crystals through neutrophil-mediated phagocytosis. So what are some of the signs and symptoms of pseudogout? Pseudogout can present like osteoarthritis leading to what we call pseudo-osteoarthritis. It's not osteoarthritis, but it can present like osteoarthritis. It can also present like rheumatoid arthritis. So we call this pseudo-rheumatoid arthritis. But generally, the signs and symptoms of pseudogout is arthritis or inflammation of the joints, particularly of the knees, wrists, MCP joints, hips, shoulders, elbows, ankles, and the big toe. So it can affect some of the joints like gout, like the knees and big toe, but it generally can affect other joints as well. Now, pseudo gout can undergo what we call acute attacks, and there are specific triggers for these acute attacks. Some of the triggers include illness, trauma, surgery, and dehydration. So being dehydrated can actually increase the um, concentrations of calcium pyrophosphate crystals leading to increased deposition of these crystals and some of these other triggers can also do the same. So how do we actually diagnose and treat pseudogout? Diagnosis of pseudogout involves arthrocentesis or aspiration of the joint. So we take a needle, we actually aspirate the contents of the joint, and we look for the presence of calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystals, or CPPD crystals. Or we can also perform an x-ray, x-ray to look for chondrocalcinosis. Chondrocalcinosis is calcification of the hyaline cartilage. And how do we treat it once we've made the diagnosis? So once we have seen the presence of these calcium pyrophosphate dihydrate crystals, we can confirm a diagnosis of pseudogout. So how do we treat it? We can treat it by arthrocentesis again. We can aspirate those crystals out of the joint. We can also leave it as a supportive treatment since a lot of these times it's self-limiting. So we can have rest. We can use NSAIDs like ibuprofen. 
or we can use or and or we can use uh, steroids to relieve some of that inflammation we've talked about before. So anyways guys, this was a quick lesson on Sudogood. I hope you found this lesson helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.